see you tonight. Appreciate y'all coming out tonight on a sort of a stormy night on behalf of our pastor, our deacons, our staff, myself. Welcome to the worship service tonight. Looking forward to uh, presenting our cantata to you, Bethlehem Morning. What I want you to do tonight is just take yourself back. Just be there in Bethlehem. Um, this is what it's all about. The music we'll be doing tonight and the program is all about him. Jesus is the reason for the season. So we want you to enjoy, relax, and uh, during this time, just reflect in your own life about Christmas, what Christmas is, who Christmas is to you, who Jesus is in your life. I know it's about a lot of stuff, but uh, it is about him tonight. Our narrator tonight will be Les Hunts, our soloist, Heather Dempsey, well, George and Mellon on the piano. Sit back, enjoy yourself, relax, Bethlehem morning. Bethlehem. When we just hear the name, our minds are flooded with images. We may never have been there, but it's our backdrop for the story of Christmas year after year. Yet long before that holy night, we imagine a scene that takes place in the courts of heaven. Here the Creator prepares to be the created, and here God commissions his angel Gabriel to descend to earth. Next, 
we find ourselves in Nazareth, where a devout young woman receives the news that she has been chosen by God to bear a child who will be the son of the Most High. We see a poor carpenter awakened by an incredible dream. And then we watch as Mary and Joseph respond to God's call on their lives. Together they set off on a journey, a journey of unwavering faith that takes them to the little town of Bethlehem and the amazing miracle waiting there. to Bethlehem that Naomi returned with her widowed daughter-in-law Ruth. In Bethlehem, Ruth met and married Boaz, and Samuel anointed a young shepherd boy named David king. The prophet Micah foretold that one would be born in Bethlehem who would rule over Israel. This night, in this little village, just five miles from Jerusalem, the prophecy is fulfilled. We watch in wonder as God sends our salvation.
our Savior has been born. His name is Jesus. We call him Emmanuel, God with us, Redeemer, God's only begotten Son, our Messiah, King and Lamb. Angels announce his birth to shepherds who rush to find him. And time after time, year after year, we follow those shepherds to bow at the manger and worship.
the night is over and the sun rises over Bethlehem. The silence of centuries of waiting has ended with the song of glory to God in the highest. The world will never be the same. God has come to us as a helpless baby. Morning has broken and it's the dawn of redeeming grace. Bethlehem and what took place there won't let us just take note of the birth of Jesus and then go on with life as it was before. His coming demands a response. Who was the child who was born that night? Did angels really fill the sky? And did a new star show kings where to find him? What will we believe? Is he just a baby or the son of God? Will he find rejection? or welcome? Will we rebel or will we worship? Now is the time and this is the place to decide.
Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And 1 John chapter 4 verse 10 says, This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
Jesus came for us when he was born in Bethlehem. And it was for us that he went to Calvary. We are the reason he came. And he is the reason we are here. And the reason we can't help but celebrate. Bethlehem calls us. Worship. Rejoice. Give glory to God. Jesus is born.
That's really not what I was waiting on to just figure out what I'm going to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, uh, allowing us to do this. Every Christmas we've been doing it, I know, for 30 years. But uh, it's been a joy preparing this particular cantata because it's, it, it covers all the bases. This cantata covers all the bases. It goes from the cradle to the cross. And these are risen. It's joy. It's all about Chris has been doing a a great job in the last this week of Advent of uh, just bringing out what the Advent is all about and it was brought together tonight with music I meant to say this at the beginning of the program if you're here tonight and you don't know about our, uh, our traditional uh, Christmas Eve communion candlelight service please let me encourage you to be here for that it's going to be at 4 o'clock this year be, we've been normally this at a different time for us we, we talked about it, prayed about it, and then there's reasons, you know, a lot of things going on. But if you want to just enjoy a Christmas Eve together as family, let me encourage you to be here Tuesday night at 4 o'clock and join us. Well, I've got a few thank yous, and we're going to go. And thank you for coming. We didn't know what the weather's going to be. As I was walking out, Channel 13 said, Flash flood warnings, Calhoun County. That didn't bother me. I'll tell you about this choir. If I'd have got here tonight, there'd been 10 of us. You would have heard the same program. Thank you for coming. If you're visiting with us, you are so, so welcome. The doors at Williams are always open to visitors. And you come and worship with us any time that you feel led to do that. Uh, I sort of take it easy on our sound men during these times of the year. Uh, if you're familiar with most churches, they do orchestras and tapes and stuff. We do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, Mike and Chris do such an awesome job keeping us straight. Thank you, guys. Let's give these two guys a big hand. For the last couple of years, Les Hans and his wife, you've been in a church. Les does an awesome job narrating. He gets a book, and uh, there's a guy that's on these books. Have you ever heard him? This guy is a professional reader. <laughs> he told me the first time he read, I ain't. I ain't talking like him. I said, so he didn't even listen to him this year. Les Hunt's awesome job. Give Les a big hand. There's not much we can say about our soloist for tonight. Heather is uh, sort of expecting a child. <laughs> Heather has been sick. This was the first time since we started that we've sung this song together because she's been sick. Awesome job, Heather. Give Heather a big hand. I wish, uh, I wish words could describe our accompanist. Well, actually, there's no words to describe George. <laughs> Been working on it for a while, George. And actually, this is the first time tonight that we've done this program with organ and piano. We've been practicing back here. I don't know how many years. I know Marilyn, I think, was maybe was born over there on that piano. I don't know. <laughs> two of the finest, and I'm going to say this because I know this, okay? Two of the finest accompanists I know in Calhoun County and probably anywhere around. Marilyn and George, God bless you. Thank you. Give these folks a big hand. I was going to say this to the end. Um, most of you are familiar with our church. We have a couple ladies. I wish that uh, Joyce Welch, most of you know Joyce, has not been feeling well lately. She would love to have been here to sing with us. She's just not able. The Lord's Green has really not been able to practice a lot and sing with us a lot lately. This morning, I finished our song. She was sitting right down here. I went over and kissed her on the cheek and said, I love you. Thank you. She said, I sure wish I could have been up there. Sort of surprised, but not too surprised. When I came in tonight, she was here first in the choir. Don't know how she got in the church. <laughs> Marilyn probably let her in. Where's Mr. Lois? Mr. Lois, we love you. I do not know how long she's been in the choir. She don't even know, but I know it's been a long, long time. She's faithful. She loves Jesus. She loves Williams, and she loved this choir. And guess what? 
she even loved the choir director. <laughs> Coach, you told me so. Let's give it up for Mr. Lord. God bless you, sweetie. I'm going to do this. It was uh, not spur of the moment. I asked one of the family members about doing this at the end of the program. As a gentleman that would have been here. Where would Doug sit? About, about here. This is the chair. We didn't, this chair is empty. This chair would have been filled by Doug Ponder. We're going to dedicate this cantata tonight in his memory because knowing he loved this choir. He loved this choir. Guess what? He loved his choir director. I think it runs in that family. But Doug was a precious man to us, his family. Doug, thank you for your service to this church. Choir, I've said all I can say about the choir. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the choir of Williams Baptist Church. Thank you. Just, just remain, remain standing. We're going to have a dismissal prayer. Listen, I hope this is going to be the most meaningful Christmas that we have. It's already the, the services this morning. I have been uh, months, weeks. has been awesome. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed uh, planning and uh, Chris planning the, the stuff. And this morning, it just all came together. Be here Sunday morning for worship. And uh, thank you. Thank you. When you pray tonight, there's hurting people, hungry people, people that need a friend, people that need a Savior. We have lots of stuff going in our church. You pray for them. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. And have a merry, merry Christmas. I'm going to ask our pastor, Brother Chris, if you'll come and dismiss us in a word of prayer. That you get. We got some hot, spicy something in the back of the kitchen if you want to just hang around and... Uh, uh, drink some with us, okay? <laughs> come on, come on. I, I, I don't, I don't. What? church about 12 years and there's not a probably any three people in this church that contributes no more to this church than Roy and Eva Barker. Amen. He visits, Amen. he does, I mean Roy goes far beyond what he has to do and I appreciate it. He does a good job with choir. He makes us mad a lot of times. <laughs> But he's a, he's a truly man of God. And I wanted to thank him for the work he does and the job he does. And I know all the fire feels the same way. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that, but, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, but as we go out tonight, may you go with the words that you've heard, taking the light of Christ with you out into the world, and I hope to see you back here as we celebrate the arrival of the Christ child on Christmas Eve. As we go forth from this place, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much. God, there's so much that we can thank you for, but Lord, tonight we're thankful for the gift of song, the gift of worship, and the gift of community. And so, Lord, tonight as we have worshipped, as we have heard the gospel and song through the gifts of this, this choir, our accompanist, our director, God, we just pray that it's touched our hearts in a way that 
causes us to want to share what we've heard with those we see. So Lord, go with us from this place. May the light that has been ignited in our hearts shine forth as we go forth from this place. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.